I have been hearing messages about fornication all my life. It was very gripping, the, the lessons, and many of them were fire and brimstone. I come up under Pentecostal teachings. And, boy, I tell you, it was rough because, you know, when we were young, we just we were having sex. We were spreading seed all over the place, and it was difficult to hear those messages. And it seemed like that's all we heard about was either fornication uh, or um, then, then all the other stuff about sniffing duff and cigarette smoking and drinking and cussing and partying. And we, we heard a lot of those messages over and over again. It really didn't stop us from doing <laughs> The one sin of sex uh, before marriage, we did, we did, we did, we did a lot of that. We didn't do all this other stuff they were talking about. They just sprinkled all that other stuff in, so we would say Amen to the to the smoking because we didn't smoke. Amen to the drinking we didn't drink. Amen to the cussing. Well, we have cussed, but we still said Amen <laughs> until the fornication subjects came in and, and teachings and the preachers came in, and we just we kept quiet. As I got older and began went into ministry, you know, it, it was difficult for me to teach and preach against something that I was doing. But then I realized I had to do it. It's uncomfortable sometimes to tell people what not to do when you do it. Um, it's the old saying from the parents, don't do as I do, do as I say. So fornication, listen. I don't need to give a lesson on fornication. We all know what it is. The problem is it's being redefined. It doesn't matter what y'all are going to do. We're going we're gonna to do whatever we're going to do, and that's between you and God, and y'all got to figure this thing out. But the teachers, we are held to a higher, a big responsibility, James says. And it could be really tough. Married people... Uh, who have been married for a long time, either forgot the struggle that singles go through or they just don't know. And so they go hard on that subject matter of fornication, hard. <clears throat> and they ignore a lot of the other things that maybe they're guilty of as well. A person who's in something, they tend not to want to be bothered with that subject matter. They just move on. They ignore it or they just, uh, they'll put some dog whistles and deflect and all that stuff. Human error. Today, Prophet Lovey Elias um, came forth with his definition of fornication and sex before marriage, and he gave many of you all a way out. <laughs> Are we surprised? Not from Lovey, we're not. So I'm going to say some things here in the show that's going to shake up some of the people who follow him. I really don't care. We've talked about him before. I typically don't like to bring up these guys. I'll talk about them one time because they may have said something so outrageous. I'll bring it up and then I'm done. And I go back to teaching the gospel for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks until somebody else says something stupid. That's what we do over here. We don't chase heretics. But today I got to bring it up. You know why? Because as it pertains to prophet Lovey, we didn't send him. I'll explain that in about 60. Bass. It's the show that will get you thinking and where the topics are hot. Feel free to comment whether we agree or not. Cause he Days a week, always on time, but this time is not free. So Walter Jones, always on sleep. Latest trending topics had you jumping out your seat. He's got something to say. Come on in. The water's fine. Woo! Hello, everybody. So Walter, so Walter Jones show. I'm he, and it is a mm, evening edition. Baby, mm, mm, mm. how you is? The water is fine. The water definitely is fine. It's always fine over here, y'all. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we go to swimming. We go to swimming in nice, warm water. Y'all doing all right? Okay, today ain't gonna be ain't gonna be great. It's not gonna be all right. Uh, Spark Christian Sam say he said Walter Jones has the second best intro. <laughs> the second best. I wonder what's the first best. All right, today we're talking about the prophet loving. I'm glad the Smart Christian Channel is here. Corey Miner is here because I'm going to dig into his vault and uh, show y'all some things here that he brought up about lovey that mm, ain't so lovey. <laughs> Let's go there right now, will you please? All right, hit the share button if you subscribe to the channel. You'll get the and, and hit that bell notification. You'll know that we are live. All right, other than that, go over to Corey Miner's show and. Uh, he got more hair than I do. <laughs> right here, speaking of Corey Miner, now this is this is what he does. All right, now, what Corey did at the beginning here, he gave you, um, he sprinkled a few of Lovey's controversial statements here, all right? I'm going to play a couple of them here. Sex before, everybody says sex before marriage is a sin, right? Mm -hmm. Show me one verse that says that. God doesn't care about your sin anymore. The biggest lie you are ever told mm. <laughs> is that if it doesn't line up with scripture, it's not from God. Mm. It would be hard to listen to this man. Okay. Now, I'm going to fast forward through this because what he does is he brings up some more of the, of the hot stuff here. Okay. Let's see. Get rid of that smart Christian channel logo. Who needs that? All right. Here he is. Of judeo-christian beliefs or the morals godly morals that these things are not a good thing to do but not necessarily sin but it can lead you into a sinful path like a okay so he's saying sex before marriage is not necessarily a sin let me go back because i might have missed something uh, i gotta bring up that smart christian channel logo i hate that thing it's just it's just bad oh no oh now i'm playing now, now, now I got to pay him for that. I got to pay him to play. The, oh, God. Shut up, Corey. Say certain things are sins, but it implies based on the morals. The morals. Of Judeo-Christian beliefs or the morals, godly morals, that these things are not a good thing to do, but not necessarily sin, but it can lead you into a sinful path. Okay. Like an example, everybody says sex before marriage is a sin, right? Mm -hmm. Show me one verse that says that. Sure, I got a whole bunch there of There is no them. verse that says that. I got too many of them. <laughs> there is no explicit verse that says that. All right, right there. Explicit. While, while I was going through Corey Miner's comment section, uh, I was reading many of the comments, and many of them were agreeing with Corey on it, and then you had a couple of people who there who were followers of, of uh, Prophet Lovey. Love Okay. And they were saying, did you hear? There's two things that I always hear from people who defend mess like this. The number one thing you're going to always hear from people who want to defend a, a politician or their pastor is this. Did you hear the whole message? Did you hear the whole message? See, in politics, they always say you're taking snippets and, and, and bits and, and bites of the, the whole speech. And then you misrepresent what our leader said. The candidate said. We do that with our pastors as well. Did you hear the whole sermon? Did I have to hear a whole sermon when someone says there is no hell? Hmm. Do I have to hear anything else? From anybody who says there is no hell, there is no devil. Listen, now you got to listen to the whole sermon. There needs to be no more that I need to listen to. You told me everything. You see, in school, you, you have to comprehend and you also have to find the main theme of the paragraph or the story. That's how you, you, you're taught in school. In college, you taught. Find the main thing. And, and, and when, they tell, when they tell you to read a whole book, you don't have to, if it's 15 chapters, sometimes you don't even have to read 15 chapters. You can read probably six chapters because the author is going to repeat himself through other chapters. So they say, find the main thing. The main thing in this, what he said is fornication. It's not necessarily <laughs> a sin. 
And then he used the word explicit. So when I was in the comment section on Corey's in, uh, in his feed, you saw someone defending. You have to hear what he said. He said explicit. All right. I, you know me, I'll tell you the real. I'm not going to hide. I'm not going. I'll tell you the truth. Yeah. There's no verse that explicitly says that. So what? He, so he's saying that. that. There's that Corey again. Let me, let me fast forward because we. this is the So Arthur Jones show. And his face keeps popping up. Hold on, I'm fast forwarding it. All right, here's another one right here. It says that Adam named the animals. That person is a liar. Listen to me. Anyone who tells you Adam named animals, he lied to you. Adam never named a single animal. The Bible says the opposite. He says that when God sent animals to Adam, he watched to see what he would call them, not what he would name them. And then we simply... Now you see that right there. This is the clever speech. This is the most clever way to pull people in by taking what is the obvious based off of taking all of the scripture and coming up with the foundational point, exegete, right? The foundational point. What is the main point of the text? Why did the writer write this? He might have said a whole bunch of things around that, and then he might have said something that seems to be ambiguous at best so, so that's what he did he tried to show y'all there's some ambiguity here there was none how did these animals how were they named all right and so he he did this his web of deception on that whole audience and then the ones who were sitting there who are milk drinkers you're going to hear them say wow Here's a very important point I want you all to hear. And I typically try to land the plane here for those of you who are bunkers. Is this. When someone brings in a point that sounds new to the whole room, he's a snake. He is lying to you. He's bringing a false gospel. When something that's in the word is new to the whole room, He's a snake. You understand? He's getting ready to drop one of the most deceptive things on you, and you all are going to walk out there like robots. He just spins a web of deception. He just lied to you, and everybody went, wow. Showed him or showed the audience. All right. That is now, I'm going to fast forward because Corey has some good points here. He has uh, uh, some good videos here. Hold on why it doesn't matter where we see this at but that we see this listen to what he says about the scriptures i'm going to make a statement that some people are not going to like but i'm going to tell you the truth that's all right the biggest lie you are ever told mm. <laughs> is that if it doesn't line up with scripture it's not from god mm. wow. that is the biggest lie you're ever told teachers if something is now listen to the people in the background. Listen to the guy on the camera who's close to the camera. Listen to the woman say, wow. And they're so amazed at his isogetical way of just spinning this web. A secret, it means it's not in here. Yes. Wow. 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 No, somebody wow. didn't hear what I said. Okay, I know some religious people won't like what That's I'm good. saying. That's good, though. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it one more time. The secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him. Mm -hmm. So what Abraham wrote is not a secret. Wow. It's Amen. a mystery. Wow. Amen. Do you think he told you everything? No. No. Mm. no. Now the Bible is clear about teaching what comports or what. Now, I'm going to keep going here. I'm going to fast forward uh, to this other video. Okay, right here right now right now i'm saying it before god i know myself especially in this nation can nobody cast out demons like me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is true i am not saying the other people are not casting out demons they are they are being used by god but i know my spiritual level i know it right now i'm saying it before god i know myself especially in this nation now let me give you two passages and we'll He's the greatest demon buster in the world. There's no one else like him. That's a snake call. 
And I heard that he's he's out there trying to sue people like like myself, who's coming strong after him with this messology. So, Corey, get ready. You and I need to do a GoFundMe because he's coming after the both of us. <laughs> Glad is right here. Say Whitehead. <laughs> All right. He's coming after both of us, brother. All right. We need, we need to set up a GoFundMe because, you know, I got I got grandkids. I can't I can't I can't afford this. Now, right here. Your sin. God doesn't care about your sin anymore. He doesn't care about your sin anymore. Pastor told you the opposite. I'm telling you the truth. Everyone has fallen short of the glory of God. The work of the Holy Spirit is to perfect us in God. So God is busy perfecting. Sin doesn't mean you are not a child of God. When you are in Christ, we stumble. We don't sin. We fall, but we don't sin. Why? Because when you are in Him, the law does not exist for you anymore. It is only the law of love. To go even further to show how heretical this person is <laughs> Corey. this man tells people <laughs> that the way out of the flesh to get out of your flesh Corey, crazy <laughs> hold on hold on hold on let me go back meditation this is why you cannot engage with the spiritual you are in the flesh mm. yet the way out of the flesh is not prayer is meditation come on you want your spirit to go farther but you have not prepped the vessel to be able to go far you have breaks within meditation. When you worship God, there's a time you get into meditation. Because every prayer, in order for it to enter the spiritual realm, it gets into the place of meditation. Because meditation is the key to the spiritual realm. Well, how bad is that? Well, the Bible is clear. The Bible says, James tells us that if any of you are suffering, whatever it is you're going through, he says to pray. Mm. You know, sometimes Corey is correct. <laughs> It's amazing that he outright says these things in front of so many people and you all will support it, defend it. All right. Now, the world is having the same issue. The result of fornication, sex, what have you, is taking a toll actually on, on people's health. I was watching um, Value Tainment. I often watch him. He, I know him personally, so I watch him. He, I don't always agree with his conservative so-called ways, all right? <laughs> I'm conservative, and so two conservatives are fighting, he and I. But listen to this one. This is we have the fattest kids ever had. So I'm thinking, okay, yeah, because they're overeating or they're just eating. They're putting a lot of stuff. The government putting a lot of stuff in our food, all right? I didn't know he was going to spin it this way why we have so many fat kids. He says, why testosterone is plumber, plumbering, plummeting, all right, <laughs> in America. Let's see. Uh, uh, if you want to find out more about the ticket, I want to talk about the most uh, important story in the economy today. Testosterone levels plummeting <laughs> in young men due to porn consumption as linked to social isolation shows real problem. The Sun, young men's social isolation and retreat from society are linked to changing norms and discomfort would redefine masculinity. However, studies indicate that plummeting testosterone levels in young men, possibly influenced by excessive porn consumption, may, con may also contribute to their desire to separate from society. Testosterone levels play a crucial role beyond sexual desire, impacting body and facial hair, muscle mass, bone density, uh, fertility, mood, and social anxiety. Excessive consumption of pornography is associated with low reproductive hormone levels in men, which can contribute in reduced testosterone levels uh, and potential uh, social isolation. Uh, natural way to boost testosterone level include improving sleep quality, getting sunlight exposure, and taking vitamin D supplements, consuming omega-3 fish fatty acids, and engaging in strength training exercises. Last. Is that something? Now, the, the world is trying to deal with this on the natural end, and the church trying to deal with this on the spiritual end, which... Fornication obviously is natural, but we're going to show you in the scriptures where it was spiritual first, then it was natural. And maybe this is where Lovey was trying to go by saying it was not explicitly a sin before. Now, he didn't say the word fornication, but we know what, what, what the word sexual immorality is. All right? The newer Bibles took the word fornication out of the scripture, out of the, the, the King James used fornication, uh, the Geneva Bible, and maybe a couple others. Of, of of antiquity, use fornication, and then 
after um, we saw the postmodern Bibles begin to remove them out. Not that it was wrong for them to do it. Um, they did it for a particular reason because Bibles interpret or they, they don't just translate, but they also interpret what words are and phrases are. So I don't have a problem with that. So here they're talking about the, um, the lack of getting sun and exercise, what have you. And there is, has been an, an onslaught. Of, there's so many um, detailed uh, news writings and op-eds on men who have low sperm cell counts. It's out of control. And this is not just single people, but these are also married men who are hooked on porn and they can't satisfy their wives because pornea <laughs> is in the way. So the world, all right, there's a there's a brother here that he does bring on. Right. I had a great time with these guys at Fresh and Fit with Myron. You guys are freaking amazing. Okay. I would they can't measure up. Right here. Yeah, um, it's it's a combination of things. And I was actually just writing some notes as you were speaking about it. I would say there's a couple of things that are contributing to this. One is women are more successful now than ever before. So a lot of guys feel like they can't compete or they can't measure up. You got, you know, an influx of pornography that's huge. You can get it for free anywhere, anytime on your phone at the, you know, drop of a hat. Video games, right, become more and more immersive, more and more interactive. They've grown in popularity significantly. It's probably one of the most... Uh, popular ways of entertainment nowadays. They're beating out movies and television. Then you got obesity, right? Being fat is fairly acceptable in the West nowadays. It's okay to be fat. Um, you also have guys in general that are just lazy. Thanks to technology and everything else that we have nowadays, people aren't as social. Guys don't feel the need to get out there and get to know women anymore. A lot of guys are socially awkward. Um, you know, this is through the rise of social media, dating apps, etc. There's a lot of guys that have issues, right, where they're good looking guys and they're able to get garner attention from women, but they don't know how to speak or convey themselves properly because they don't have the adequate social skills where they've been speaking to people for a, a good amount of time and learning, you know, certain social cues, how to speak properly, cadence, speaking from an active voice versus a passive voice when speaking to women because women typically respond very favorably to the active voice versus the passive voice. So all these little things, right, might seem like small little insulated, insulated incidents, but if you add them all together, it snowballs and creates kind of what we have, like what they call it the lost bar generation. Um, so in general... All of these things playing to, and there's more too, but those are just some of the ones I could think yeah. of. The, top top, of the lost boy generation. Mm -hmm. Yep. We are a dying breed, Corey. And we're being overly feminized. Especially black men. We are an endangered species, always, always been. But it's gotten worse since they was removing fathers from the homes in the 1960s and 70s. And then came the whole fight against drug addiction and say no to drugs and and um and the whole three strikes you out and then the whole crack cocaine versus cocaine the powder for whites and crack for black all of this is systematic and then they these men went to church and then it it continued it continued and then the man would go home and then he's beat up by guess who <laughs> in the house so when, when a man rises up in the morning and he goes to bed at night, he is deceived. His testicles are ch chopped. He's told he's a dog. He's no good. Uh, he won't amount to anything. He's a thug. He's all these things. So at home, he's mistreated. In the neighborhood, he's mistreated. You know, the, and then when he goes to work, if he can get work, it's bad. So in walk Kevin Samuels. Manosphere. I've done shows on all that. So all of this stuff, if you don't really study it, then you won't understand what's going on in your community or with your with your husband or with your young your your son, your brother, or your grandson. You don't know. All right. The world is trying to deal with this and they're trying they're uh, they're uh, approaching this in a way to trying to help these men. That when you go to church though, it's all about raise your hand, lift your hands, lift your hands. E -ba 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 -ba. Give me your tithe, give me your offerings, let's shout, and then we're done with you until we see you again next week. In during that spiel on Sunday, or maybe you got you in some type of revival or somebody came to town, you got somebody like Prophet Lovey who then speaks in this man's mind, and here we go. Wash, rinse, and repeat. So let's look what uh Wikipedia has to say about this word uh, so that we can get some definition here. We already know it's consensual sexual intercourse. 
between two people not married. All right. Uh, we know what adultery is. Okay. As we go to the etymology, we see in the original Greek version of New Testament, pornea is used 25 times, including variants such as the genitive. All right. So Latin Vulgate for you bunkers, you know what that is. Translated translation of the Greek text translated the term uh, fornicata, fornicatus, fornicata, and fornicate. The terms fornication and fornicators are found in 1599 Geneva Bible. All right, I have it here on the floor. 1611 King James, 1899 Catholic Dewey Rames, and a 1901 American Standard. Now, many modern post-World War II Bibles completely avoid all usage of fornicators and fornication. English Standard, the one I use, NLV, NLT, that is, NIV, Christian Standard. Uh, this is Pastor, um, he uses um, Pastor, um, what's his name? Uh, Pastor Tony Evans uses the Christian Standard. All right, Good News Bible, and it goes on and on. They removed that word. It's not a bad thing. You all, because what they put in place of it uh, is sexual immorality. You understand? Um, whoredom. So, what's the difference? <laughs> whether you use porn, porn um, whether you use pornea, fornication, or, or whoredom, or sexual immorality, we all, we all, we all know. We, we, we all know what that is. All right. So, as we go down, you will also see some of the history behind it. The Roman Empire talks about fornication. Great Britain talks about it. Great Britain ha had no problem with it. Even if you were, you, 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 cousins were able to even marry. And Great Britain was just, they just was nasty. <laughs> okay. Uh, the United States, uh, it wasn't so much a, a Ill illegal act to, to have sex before marriage. But, but then as we got further into the history of our nation, they began to implement in Wisconsin and Utah the law against a vaginal sexual intercourse and then it was overturned by the by the court your supreme court all right so we all can have good good wholesome non-wholesome <laughs> pornea australia but look what look what islamic nations look what they say in some muslim countries such as saudi arabia pakistan afghanistan iran kuwait uh, Bronia, maldives malaysia morocco oman maratinia qatar sudan yemen any form of sexual activity outside of marriage is illegal <laughs> in the Muslim nations. Any form is illegal. You will get spanked. You will, you, your hands will get chopped off. You can lose your life. Okay, it goes on and on. All right, and then they talk about Christianity, uh, the Pauline epistles, and, and on and on. So I, I just don't understand uh, Brother Lovey, I just, okay, I'm sorry. I do understand Brother Lovey. I don't understand you all. Here's the thing. Whatever someone like this brother says and do things like that, I don't question these men like, like Dietrich Hatton, all right, I called him a thief. And all these other brothers who are to, you know, Juanita Bynum, the, 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 who represents the female part, I don't really go hard on them for an hour and a half as much as I go hard on y'all, you see? Because if you are so attached to one preacher, one teacher, you're going to find yourself agreeing with everything they have to say. Everything. When you're that attached to them, you must watch the Sir Walter Jones show with a Bible in your hand or it needs to be in your heart. When you watch my show, when you watch Corey, I don't always agree with Corey minor. He knows that. I don't always agree with him. I don't always ag agree with uh, our brother. Who is he? Um, who said that he needed to back back up a little bit from um, putting up some content because he wanted to spend more time with his family? I I don't I don't always agree with him. Many many of these content creators I don't always agree with them. See see smart Christian didn't even know that I don't always agree with 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 you all. You know why? 
because they don't always agree with me. And you know what? That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Thank you, Alan Parr. But here's the thing. I agree with more of what Alan Parr says than what I disagree. I agree with what more what Corey says than I disagree with him. I agree with most of the things that most of my popular YouTube channels, uh, I agree mostly with them than I do than I disagree. Uh, with um, Bishop Moody, who I often bring up, who I think was one of the greatest fatherly figures there was outside of my own father, I agree with most of what he said, but I disagree with some of the things he said. Why? Because I know, <laughs> he said I'm good now, I know how to a detach myself, my heart. I know how to detach my heart to someone who's charismatic. And so when I enter a room, I enter a room with a Bible in my hand and in my heart, and I enter in with all of my scruples, my brain cells working. So when Corey brings on that crazy, ridiculous music, oh, oh, I don't know what he's saying in that ridiculous opening. It's one of the most ridiculous openings in YouTube history. Okay. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know. Anyway, when we get past that ridiculous opening and we see that bald head, he typically is going to say something I agree with. <laughs> typically. Corey's going to say something I agree with. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be real good. And then he's going he gonna to pull out his Lagos Bible and go into some Greek, and then he's going to start speaking in tongues. <laughs> then then I, I have to turn him off. He goes, he goes to speaking in tongues. I think they call it Greek. <laughs> All right? All right, so <laughs> outside of that, y'all get ready because he and I are doing a show this week <laughs> together. He and I and some a few other folks get ready for the show. It's coming, y'all. It's coming. So we just we've been trying to get this together for for the past few weeks. But he goes to bed early at night, not understanding what his problem is. So right here, look what the Bible says, y'all. Since we're in the Bible, can we stay here? Look what Hebrews chapter five say: a call to spiritual growth. You all are so attached to a man <laughs> because. No, no, let, matter of fact, let's go to Corey's uh, channel and look at the comment section. All right, that's what I want to do. Let's go in the comment section. I, I, I took a snapshot of a lot of his comments. All right, Jennifer say, leave my friend alone. <laughs> All right, I took a, <laughs> my, my bad, I took a snapshot of many of his comments. All right, now let's see if this going to work. Okay. Um, let's see. I I found some highlights here. As soon as it focused, you didn't listen to the whole video. Did y'all see that right there? He said explicit. There was no verse that says sex before marriage is sin. You see that right there? I don't, I didn't mean to expose this person, but when you comment on a public, uh, platform, and your comment is public. <laughs> your comment is public. Now, I, I want to find the, all of the story of, so where am I? Um, this person here, King 7507, my God today. I got to read all of what this person said. I, I've got to go on his channel to read it, though, because it, it was a little lengthy. But I'm going to show you all what this person said about love it. All right, here's another one that I caught. Mm -hmm. Sharon says she dizzy. <laughs> okay. Thank you for sharing. It's so crazy because most of the people who go to the prophets aren't repentant believers. They come for they come to God for a fix and live a life that's pleasing to themselves. They have itching ears and as long as people are looking to hear about their future, we will always have people like him. Future. I have seen too many people like this who lack spiritual maturity. They go only for selfish gain and call churches to, that preach Jesus only boring. Boring. That was good. Okay. Here's another one. Right here. I noticed I, I think a lot of females mostly follow this man. I wasn't going to say it, y'all. Alberto said it. I wasn't going to say it. Alberto says mostly females. Follow this man. 
because of his looks and the way he delivers his words and it sounds fake pe- <laughs> fake peaceful. This guy is just off and honestly, this is why we need to learn the word of God ourselves and ask the Lord for understanding. Love you, twist scriptures so slicky. Mm. Uh-oh. I wasn't going to say it. So I let, I, let, I let that person say it. I wasn't going to say nothing. But let me go to, if I can find it, this is Keisha R. Uh, let me go and see if we can find Keisha R's comment. It was quite gripping to say the least. Keisha R., where are you? Because I want to read what you said. It, it, wait, was it Keisha or was it Kings? Okay. No, it wasn't Kings. It was Keisha. Keisha, where you at, girl? Because what you said was gripping. And, and if uh, Rogers would, well, I don't want to put that, that might be too much for you to go over there and copy and paste what Keisha said. All right. Let's see. And and maybe if Corey could pin Keisha's comment because it was quite gripping. All right. I may have to go on my phone to do it. Here it is. Right here. Okay. All right. Here's what she said. <clears throat> in January of uh, this year, I was in Houston at a conference. I started talking to the lady sitting next to me and she was ranting and raving about this amazing prophet. Mm. Uh, she said he was anointed and he was prophesying over people and he was so accurate. He was casting out demons, etc. Uh, she said it kind of rubbed me the wrong way because it was almost like she was a fan. I told her I would check him out. I asked for his name again and she said Prophet Love you. So she was uh she said she was she was like he was from Africa. Check him out. Well, the conference was a three day conference and I totally forgot to look him up. About a month later, I saw a video of this and I started to research. I saw that he was in uh, Simi Valley, California, and I was going to be in Simi. So I made plans to visit his church on Thursday. Let me tell you something. I almost did not go to church. She said, since I was already in the area, I got uh, there about 45 minutes before the service started. They opened the doors 30 minutes early. When I tell you there was a long, so long, she meant line so long it would put the Apple line when they released new iPhones to shame. As soon as I walked up to the line, I heard the Lord say, even the elect will be deceived. Hmm. Don't worry, y'all. If y'all can't see it, I'm reading it for you. As I waited in the, this line, the people in line were talking about him like he was a God. Like he is God. She says, I mean, there were people who drove from surrounding states to come to a regular Bible study. People flew in from further states. I had to ask, did I happen to come on a, a special day because it was insane? I overheard a man that lived in Arizona saying that he would have nightmares and feel guilty when he didn't come. Then this lady was saying that she feels guilty when she doesn't come. I was like, what in the world? I had asked them, how long do they think we will be in the line? And is it always like this? And they said, yes. And that would probably, we would probably be in the, uh, the first overflow room. There was a man. There was a main sanctuary and two overflow rooms. So I ended in up. I uh, ended up in the overflow room. I stayed for forty minutes and left early. She says that man is not from God, the Father, and he does not operate in the Holy Spirit. He is prophesying to people using divination. He speaks to familiar spirits. He twists the word and says that he is going deep. No, sir, you are teaching a new gospel. It is so sad. The Lord confirmed this to me in March, and now I have seen several people exposing him as false prophet. That's exactly what he is, a false prophet. Man, let me tell you, when I read that, I'm sorry to uh, uh, keep uh, Corey's face on the screen like that. I know you all were disturbed by <laughs> you, all, you all were disturbed by his face <laughs> staying on the screen that long. But I, I, I had to read. 
and Curry going to get me, boy, I tell you, I'm going to get a phone call right after this show. So the only thing that I can think about is going to the scriptures to try and see how we can unpack this. <laughs> he said, <laughs> he said, ball and beautiful. Okay. You got the ball person. You got the ball part, right? <laughs> Ballpark Franks. They plump when you cook them. Okay, right here. Here's what the words say, Corey Minor. You, and one day you're going to graduate to be a major, but we will deal with the minor issue. There is much more we would like to say about this, but it is difficult to explain, especially since you are spiritually dull and don't seem to listen. Corey and I go live all week long. And we talk about this stuff all the time. You have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others yourself. You should have your own YouTube channel. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. My grandchildren, my grandson Charles is drinking milk. But my grandson, Amir, is eating solids. And his, his bowel movements stank out the whole house because he's on solids. You all supposed to be stanking. You understand? You all supposed to be smelling up the place. The whole world supposed to be have a smell. Because you walking up and down the hours, you at your job, you everywhere, you supposed to be stanking <laughs> because you're eating solid foods. The Bible says that the apostles turned the world, the whole world upside down. It was they, they people smelled them coming. When Jesus would walk down the street and the demons were like, oh, he's coming, he's coming. There's a stench. <laughs> right. Because you're eating solid foods. But my, my new grandbaby, Charles, when, when he poops and, he, and he, you can't smell it, you, just, you can kind of smell it, but it's just all milk. It's just all milk. His, his poop just don't have that aroma. But Amir, when he poops, you know he's been in the room. <laughs> Listen, he said, what if, what if we were vegans? Vegans sometimes have the worst smell. <laughs> My son is a vegan. Ask me how. <laughs> we, don't tell nobody I said it. Solid foods. Solid foods. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. <laughs> Queenly said, we get it. <laughs> she tried to tell me, shut up. Solid foods is for those who are mature who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. Solid foods. Y'all put some meat in your belly. So that's Hebrew 5. And then when, he, when you get to Hebrew 6, he continues in this. Sharon said, stanking. <laughs> right, right, Joyce. I know. I know he. Thank God he don't watch my show that much. Whew. Hallelujah today. Right here. So let's let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead of becoming mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental uh, importance of repentance from evil deeds. Do we love Elias? Do we have to go over the fundamentals? Hmm? And placing our faith in God. You don't need further instructions about baptisms, do you? I think you do because Corey and I keep going live about it. What about laying on the hands? Are you, we do? Yes, because Corey and I keep going live about it. What about the resurrection of the dead? We keep going live about this stuff. And the eternal judgment, we keep going live. And so, God willing, we, must, we will move forward to further understanding. Uh, that's why I be moving on. I'm not talking about lovey after today. I'm done with him until he does something way, way, way outlandish. I just don't chase these guys every week. I just don't do it. That's Corey's job. <laughs> so Luke 1 says this, Dear friends, I had been eagerly planning to write to you about the salvation we all share, but now I find that I must write something else. 
urging you to defend the faith that God has entrusted, entrusted since for all time his holy people. I got to defend this thing. I say this because some ungodly people have warmed their way into your churches. Love you. Warmed. You see this word right here? Warmed. And the word is worm. <laughs> I know what a worm is, right? I was pronouncing it like worn, but it's a warming, but it's worm. <laughs> worm. There's a song that has the word worm in it. Such a worm as I. What song is that, y'all? Saying that God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. Did y'all see that? Look at that. Uh-huh. Look at that. Yes. At the cross, I knew Deatrice would know it. Yeah, Robbie got it too. Such a worm as I. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the, uh, uh, for such a worm as I. There it is. <laughs> at last did my soul. All right, anyway. Look at this. These worms are saying that God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. It's okay. Have sex. The condemnation of such people was recorded long ago for they have denied our only master, the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to remind you, though you already know these things. What? Many of the letters from Paul and Peter and Jude were reminder letters. Philippians, they were reminders. You already know this, that a thousand years is like a day with the Lord and a day is like a thousand years. He said, you already know this. They're like, how, how, because it was written in Psalms chapter 90. You didn't know that? Shame on you. How are you in a, a certain profession and you don't know the basics, the foundations and the tenets of, of what you are? I never know. I never met a doctor who didn't know how to take blood pressure who didn't know how to put a needle in your arm and take blood i never met one yet can you imagine going to a doctor's office and, and he's like where do i put the needle <laughs> that's what's happening here in the scriptures here's what he said do we have to go over the fundamentals of pornea <laughs> la -di -di, da 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 -di da do, 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 do. Look at Acts chapter 15. This one right here going to blow you away. <laughs> All right. There's about five on the folks here. And Lovey is watching because he's writing up. He's called his, he already called his lawyer. He already had the, laws, the lawyer's office getting ready to put me and Corey in jail. While Paul and Barnabas were at Antioch of, uh, of Syria, some men from Judea arrived and began to teach believers. The believers, unless you are circumcised as required by the law of Moses, you cannot be saved. This is what I heard in the church of God in cash. Oh, I'm sorry. The church of God in Christ all my life. In order for me to receive the Holy Ghost, I've got to tarry on the altar all night until I go high party at T T T D D T. And then I got the Holy Ghost, and then I can just go on with my life. I got it. Like it's some kind of disease or something. Or it's like some kind of uh, Oscar, Academy Award, or some kind of Grammy. You worked so hard to get to this award, to get this award. You're good now. Your name will be in the annals of time for getting this award. This is all I believe that the Holy Ghost was for, for me to go he, T, D, I, T, T. That's all he was good for. 
It ain't about him uh, coming into my life and being a, a guiding post and a light and a beacon light and showing me all truth and teaching me this and this, teaching me that and what have you. It ain't about all that. I got the Holy Ghost because I went TDIT. So at church, I was like, thank the Lord for being here. Thank the Lord for being saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. That was the speech that everybody gave when they got up to testify. So these preachers, these teachers came to your church to tell you this is what this is what it's supposed to be. And this is what was happening at the Council of Jerusalem. New converts was coming in and the Jews were like, no, you can't come in here. The Church of God in Christ had a song. You can't join in. You got to be born in. <laughs> now, I know what the song means. It is it can be uh, understood with some level of ambiguity there but it it basically spiritually means you can't be born again in 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 jesus the church of god in which is in christ not the denomination had nothing to do with the denomination but those who sang it in the denomination made me believe that you literally had to be born in the denomination in order to get to heaven so i was walking around as a young man thinking that only church of god in christ members will be in heaven <laughs> Y'all know I talk about them. I know, them, but I praise them. But I talk about them too, and I don't care. They like they they go after me, and I'm still here. People are like, why are you still there? Because I'm a light. Why take some light out of there? Then it's going darkness will show up. I got to stay in there to be a light. <laughs> it's it's a punk who always got to leave, leave here, leave here, leave. Y'all be blocking folks. All y'all always blocking people on social media. I'm a block you. I'm a block you. That's a cop out. I tell my moderators, don't be blocking folks unless you unless they are so egregious that you may have to block them. But don't be, be blocking folks. That's a cop out. We face our giants here. We put them on the drum we're trying and then we go back and forth sometimes. But don't be blocking folks. That's a cop out. It's, this was happening at the Council of, uh, uh, of Jerusalem. No, these, these Christians. And so Peter rolls up and says, hey, uh, I went to Cornelius' house. And I was preaching the gospel. And guess what? What? They started to speak in tongues. The Gentiles. What? Yes. The Gentiles were speaking in tongues and they got converted. Just like us from Acts chapter 2. They got the same thing. And they went over there to the, the, the council and say, we were reporting what's going on. And then the Bible says there are some who are of the sex of the Pharisees who said, no, 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 no. They've got to be circumcised. <laughs> mm. And y'all got to read Acts chapter 15 because this is what's happening with the whole lovey thing. The deceptive measures of you can and you can't, or this is not really the, what you see. What you see, don't let your eyes deceive you. Don't believe your lying eyes. That ain't in the Bible. I will teach a new thing in you, and I'm the greatest of all. No one cast out devils like me. Donald Trump, effect. He looked up in the sky and said, I'm the greatest. No one can fix this but me. And he looked in God's face and said, nobody can fix this but me. <laughs> and then what did he do? He put Tic Tacs in his mouth and said, I'm going to grab some vaginas. And all of the white evangelicals and some of you black Pentecostals say, that's our man. <laughs> that's our man right there. The enemy of mine enemy is my friend. He's our man. Ra, ra, ra. Keep hope alive or, or make America great again. <laughs> our leader puts Tic Tacs in his mouth and grabs vaginas. He's our man. He can shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and never lose anybody. He's our man. He's Cyrus. The Lord has given him to us. <laughs> this is lovey Elias. He's our guy. He's our guy. So the apostles and the elders met together to resolve this issue. I said at the beginning of this show, we didn't sin, lovey. We didn't send him. So the apostles and the elders met together to resolve the issue. At the meeting, after a long discussion, Peter stood and addressed uh, the, these people. And he addressed them and said, everything that I said here, 
when they had finished, James stood. Then, brothers, listen. Peter has told you about the time God first visited the Gentiles to take uh, from them a people for himself. And this conversation of Gentiles is exactly what the prophet predicted. He predicted this. How could y'all not believe this and agree with this? So what happened? What Lovey said has been predicted. False teachers are coming through the back door. It's been predicted. Y'all, we did not send him. You all ran to him. You didn't hear the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is not the one who opens the door. Jesus is the door. He is the way. And we used to be called the way the apostles were called the way. So he is the door, the way, the truth and the what? So somebody's in the house and they are imposters. You heard their voice and you say, Ooh, he sure is fine. <laughs> he has wonderful sex appeal and he's got that African accent. Mm, mm, mm. Woo, look at him. Listen to him. He's speaking God and Jesus out of his mouth. <laughs> we see this so much, man. So much. So look at this. And so my judgment is that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Instead, we should write and tell them, here it is right here. We should not make the Gentiles do all this law stuff. Instead, we should write and tell them to abstain from eating food offered to idols from fornication, which is sexual immorality. King James, KJV, from eating the meat of strangled animals and from consuming blood for these laws of Moses have been preached in Jewish synagogues in every city on every Sabbath for many generations. Wait, he said it wasn't in the scriptures. I thought, didn't he say that it wasn't in the, it, the, explicitly? I'm shocked. So you Gentiles who, who join with the Jews, you're not under the law, but here are, here are the things that they decided to, you are up under these things right here. And then he repeated it later. I thought it wasn't in the Bible. <clears throat> then the apostles and the elders together with the whole church in Jerusalem chose delegates and they sent them to Antioch of Syria with Paul and Barnabas to report this decision. They made a decision. Y'all is in the Bible. Mm. The men chosen were two of the church leaders, Judas, uh, Barsabas and Silas. This is the letter they took with them. Here's what they agreed on. This letter is from the apostle and the elders, your brothers in Jerusalem. It is written to the Gentile believers in Antioch, Syria and Cilicia. Greetings. We understand that some men from here have troubled you and upset you with their teaching. Prophet Lovey. But we did not send them. Are you understanding now? We didn't send them, y'all. We didn't send Carlton Pearson. We never sent him. I didn't, we didn't send Jamal Bryant. <laughs> we, we didn't send him. We didn't send Kirk Frank. <laughs> We, we, we didn't send one to bite them. We didn't send them. They're not a part of us. We didn't send uh, Dietrich Haddon. We didn't send them. They don't represent us. We've come together in the council. I wasn't there because I wasn't born. But uh, I was represented there. And they came to this understanding and conclusion that what? We didn't send them. So why are y'all running to these men? We didn't send Marcus Rogers. We didn't send them. Who sent them then? Why are y'all running to them? They're every whim. You see, because Prophet Lovey says some good things that is sound in scripture. 
But guess how many times a broke clock is correct. So we decided, having come to complete agreement, complete agreement, I'm explicitly telling y'all what's in the scriptures. To send you official representative, representatives along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul who have risked their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These men risked their lives for this. We are sending Judas and Silas to confirm that we have decided concerning your questions. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay no greater burden on you than these few requirements. All right. Here it is again. You all, you all are not under no burden of the law. You must abstain from eating foods offered to idols, consuming blood or meat, strangled animals, sexual immorality. Hear that? He said it wasn't in the Bible. If you do this, you will do well. Fare ye well, east side high. Fare ye well. Mm. Mm. The messages went out. We didn't send them. We didn't send them. Who sent them? Huh? So what is the difference between fornication and adultery? The modern dictionary definition of fornication, voluntary sexual inter, in, uh, uh, intercourse between persons not married to each other, which would include adultery. We all know the definition. The Old Testament. Now, let me, maybe this is what Lovey Meant, he should have said it this way, that fornication has two meanings, two different meanings. It all gets put in the same pot because all unrighteousness is what you are. Here's the problem. He said that sexual, having sex before marriage is not necessarily. There is no one I ever met that was half pregnant. I never met a woman that said, I'm, I'm fine, but I'm, I'm half pregnant and I'm half not. How could you not necessarily be sinning? Hmm. Huh? Huh? He said all sexual sin was forbidden by the Mosaic law and Jewish customs. All. Old Testament. All right. So the Hebrew, however, word translated fornication in the Old Testament was also the context for idolatry, also called spiritual whoredom. You see? Here's where it's not someone sleeping with another woman or another man. He could have went here. I could have supported them if he had went here. God struck Jehoram with plagues and diseases because he led the people into idolatry. He caused the people of Jerusalem to commit fornication, to go lusting like the fornications of the house of Ahab. You understand? King Ahab was the husband of Jezebel, the priest this of the lascivious God of Baal, who led the Israelites into idol worship of the most egregious kind. Ezekiel chapter 16 then shows us here something. You will start seeing fornication, but now you'll see it in the form of not sexual sins, in the natural, but in the spiritual. Why didn't he go here? Then another message came to the Lord, son of man, confront Jerusalem with her detestable sins. Huh? Give her this message from the sovereign Lord. You are nothing but a Canaanite. Mm, your father was an Amorite and your mother was a Hittite. On the day you were born, no one cared about you. Your umbilical cord was not cut. Man, I can't read all this because it gets too, it gets tough because he's talking to a nation who was married to God. He's married to the backslider. And y'all said the, the word backslider is an Old Testament word concept. It's not New Testament. Grace is New Testament. Backslider is the Old Testament. God was talking to a specific people, his chosen people. They were backslider. That's why if my people which are called by my name, he wasn't talking to you. He was talking to his literal people, the children of Israel. He was specifically answering this prayer from Solomon. If my people, all right, you all applied it to yourself. Listen, I'm not going to fight you over that. I've sprinkled it in there too, but I was trying to make a, uh, a contextual um, moment there that some of you might've missed. <laughs> all right. So contextually, we've got to read this thing properly. 
So por, 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 pornea or fornication in the Old Testament is used to, to talk about whoredom or idolatry. Are y'all with me? So when he's talking to Jerusalem, look what he say here. Look what he say. But you thought your fame and beauty were uh, your own. You gave yourself as a fornicator. Go to King James. Notice I said the newer translations removed the word fornication. As a prostitute to every man who came along. Mm. As a prostitute. Let me see. Do I do 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 I do I have what is this? 15. I, I just want to prove a, I just want to prove something to y'all. All right. Let me prove it to you. This is my King James Bible. Uh, this is verse 15. 15, there it is. Renown and uh, poured out fornications on everyone. And then he uses the word again. Here's whoredom down there. You see now? Y'all get it now? Is it making sense now? All right. The Bible always backs me up. So, so you gave yourself as a fornicator to every man who came along. So he wasn't talking about sexual sin. He was talking about idolatry. Why didn't love it deal with this one? Hmm? Your beauty was theirs for the asking. You used uh, the lovely. Uh oh, prophet lovey's name is in here. <laughs> you, you use prophet lovey things. I gave you to make shrines for idols. Where you played the prostitute. Unbelievable. How could such a thing ever happen? Mm, mm, mm. You took the very jewels and gold and silver ornaments I had given you and made statues of men and worshiped them. You worship men. Sisters, it's so easy for you to worship good looking prophetic men. You know why? I'll tell you why in a minute. This is adultery against me. Now he's using adultery. You use the beautiful. Why did God use adultery? Because you were, they were married to God. They were married to him. So his wife went a whoring. She committed fornication and adultery. You can do them both at the same time because all adulterers fornicate, but all fornicators don't adulterate. <laughs> you understand? You understand? This is adultery against me. You used the beautifully embroidered clothes I gave you to dress your idols. Mm. Then you used my special oil and my incense to worship them. Imagine it. You set before them as a sacrifice the choice flour, olive oil, and honey I had given you. And you all are giving them your hard-earned money that the Lord has given you to take care of your family. You went to uh, Simi Valley, California, and you stood in that long line like that young lady said because you was going to worship a man who was going to spin the gospel and pull you in. <laughs> you played the harlot. <laughs> and Jesus said, you all are adulterers, adulterers and adulteresses. He wasn't saying that in a sexual sense. He was saying, you are married. You are my, you are my bride or you, uh, we are betrothed to the Lord. We're not married to him. We are betrothed to him like Mary and Joseph. So when we do go out there and, and, and uh, bring in idols into our lives and, and worship men and, and, and all this other stuff, we are committing adultery against Jesus, who is going to be, who, who is the groom. Y'all understand? So this is why he used the word adulterer. In like in a sexual sense, we're committing idol worship against our husband to be. Mm -hmm. Blessing to you, Samuel Midget. Y'all understanding, huh? And this is what they were doing. 
Then he said, then you took your sons and daughters, the children you had born to me, and sacrificed them to gods. You raised your children up under that mess. Was your prostitution not enough? Must you also slaughter my children by sacrificing them to idols? In all your years of adultery and detestable sins, you have not once remembered the days long ago when you lay naked in the field. Wow, kicking. Remember when you were kicking and you was in, in, your, in your blood, drowning in your own blood, and I went and rescued you? Remember that? You don't remember that? The reason why so many women attach themselves to these kind of men is because there's a lack in their lives. Yeah, there are men following brothers like Lovey Elias. I know that. We're showing you the video. You hear the men in the, in the garden. But let me tell you, the women are there for a whole nother reason. There's a void. There's a void. And the scriptures call them silly women. They run to and fro because there's a void. They are trying to attain something that they, they know they can't, they can't attain. So they try, they, they, they run after their own lust to get something that everybody else is trying to get. They're trying to receive the prize. And some of you have absentee father issues. And so when a man presents himself in nice apparel, Gay attire, <laughs> as the scriptures say, gay apparel. He talks with an accent and he uses proper English. His hair might be braided and up. <laughs> okay, got to have some hair, got to have some hair. If not, he needs to be bald. <laughs> or if he got some hair, got to have some waves. You see, I'm a, I wrote the book, all right? I have several books on Amazon right now. Trust me, I have some experience when it comes to relationships. Uh, I'm telling you what I know, <laughs> why many of the women are attracted to men like this. Psychologically, they are attracted to them for a reason. So the Old Testament brought all this out. The prophet Ezekiel described in details the history of God's people turning away from him to play the harlot with other gods. So the New Testament fornication comes from the Greek word pornia, as we've been saying, which includes adultery and incest. Incest. The use of the word in the Gospels are the, uh, and the epistles is also in reference to sexual sins, not uh, uh, the idolatry part. Whereas fornication in the book of Revelation also refers to idolatry. So in the Old Testament, it talks about fornication being adultery. When you get to the New Testament, in the Gospels, in the Epistles, then you see it, it turns into sexual sins. And then when you get to Revelation, it goes back to idolatry. The Lord Jesus condemns two of the churches of Asia Minor for dabbling into fornication of idolatry. Revelation chapter 2 goes to the 14th verse and then the 20th verse. And he also refers to the great harlot of the end time. Now y'all getting it? So that great harlot wasn't sexual sin. It was... Uh, idolatry which is the idolatry of false religion with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of fornication revelation chapter 17 first and the second verse so adultery on the other hand always refers to the sexual sin of married people with someone other than their spouse. So we know the difference between the two now. We've always known it, but I wanted to break it down because I can't understand how you all get so caught up in someone's message to whereas what you were taught can be that easily erased because you got your eyes glued on a, a someone in the flesh, as Mother Mayhem would say, the flush. Listen, y'all, it's difficult. It, it is not that easy. When, you're, when, you're, when your flesh rises up, it ain't. I'm a single man. My flesh still work. My flesh ain't dead. It's difficult, you all. Sex feels extraordinarily good. You go to rubbing, 
it feels good. It was a problem in antiquity. It's a problem today. It will always be a problem until Jesus comes. The struggle is real. Not just with single people that the struggle is real with married folks because if you don't like your husband or your wife, you go looking and lurking for someone who can please you sexually. I get hit on by both single and married women. It's the soup du jour. Right? Because the people are not happy. <clears throat> what we do with it is what needs to be examined, but how we close our gates to this bad teaching is even more vital because what Lovey did in this mythology is free thousands and thousands of both brothers and sisters. He freed them. You see, when you connect, put your nails into a man and hold on to every whim and word, every jot and tittle. That means everything he says is law in your heart because you attach your heart to this man. And this is why I keep telling y'all, stop telling the ladies, follow your heart. Don't do it. You should never follow your heart. Because God knows your heart as, as we were, I didn't read in Acts, Acts chapter 15. God knows your heart and your heart is Wicked, not just wicked, it's desperately <laughs> wicked. Scripture says, who can know it? So when you follow your heart, you can find yourself circling a drain because your heart is circling. Daddy, I love you, I love you. Okay, he going to beat you. The children of Israel wanted a king. They was following their hearts. Because the other nations had a king, so they said, oh, daddy, daddy, we want a king. And Samuel like, okay, let me go to the Lord. <laughs> let me go to the Lord. He went to the Lord, and the Lord says, no, they don't need a king. What's wrong with me? This is a theocracy. I rule the people. Why don't they say they, why don't they need a king? Hey, God, listen, this is what they want. I'm here. Don't, hey, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> God said, okay, all right, here's what I need you to do. I'm going to give him one more chance. I'm going to give him a king, but tell them all the things that the king going to do to him. Okay. And Samuel went back and told him everything that the king going to do in the negative. And he's like, we don't care. <laughs> we love he. Daddy, we love he. But he going to beat y'all. We love he. He going to enslave your, your sons. We love he. <laughs> Okay, all right. He went back to God. Well, God, the people say they want a king. He said, all right. There's a guy right over there. I already, I already prepared him right there. He, he sure is fine. <laughs> he sure is fine. He's good looking, tall, dark, and handsome. Go, go get him because the people love the outward appearance. And Saul rode his stallion in the town. <laughs> Rise, everybody, rise, like the bishops of the Church of God in Christ. When they walk in, everybody, they stop praising the Lord. Hey, here, here comes the bishop. Here comes the judge. And he come in with his horse. Everybody rise, and the, all the people go to bowing and kissing his ring. And what did, what did that boy do? He took Israel through hell <laughs> and tried his best to kill God's anointed. <laughs> right? And here's the thing. He was God's anointed too because David wouldn't touch him because he kept saying, this is God's anointed. So then y'all don't understand that anointed doesn't always mean positive. In the Old Testament, anointed was natural. That means he was selected, not that he was holy and, and, and uh, uh, acceptable unto God, he presented his body a, a living self. No, it doesn't mean that. It means that God has selected King Saul to be the king of Israel. I protected him, selected him. He's in there as a punishment or as a judgment to you all because you want it. So he's anointed to do that job. Y'all get it now? Y'all took that word anointed and ran with it. Touch that my anointed to do my prophet no harm. Silly women. And crazy men. <laughs> Y'all get it? So it's tough. Being 
not single and being single, it is. Trust me. So Paul wrote a letter, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. He talked about you people who can't control yourself. It's better to get married. That caused the problem. Because there's a lot of people out there that are married today based off of that one text because they could not control their flesh so they got married to someone they didn't love. But because they were together you know, for a little while and they kept having sex, they said, we might as well get married even though I don't even love you. Ask me how I know. I'm being transparent again. I married somebody I did not even love. I just wanted to do it right. I knew I was going in there blind. So I was following the text. But they didn't read the rest of the text to me. (laughs) And I was too lazy to read it myself. Because then Paul said a very controversial thing. This is why Peter, in his letter, he said, Paul writes letters that is hard to understand. (laughs) It's hard to understand. So what it was hard to understand. Paul said, if you're with your fiance, it's better that you don't marry her. If you can abstain, it's better that don't, this, you, y'all can do whatever you want to. Don't marry her. It's better to not marry her than to marry her. No one read that part. <laughs> no one read that part. So I had to go into holy matrimony with somebody I didn't even love. I was in love with somebody else. How many songs were written about that? Oh, it's sad to belong to someone else when the right one comes along. That's one song. Uh, what's that? White, that's, a, that's a white group. I forgot their names. Uh, some, uh, you're actually going to put it on there. Turn on the radio. Turn the lights way down low. What's that name, y'all? Oh, ho, how many songs is that? You in this, in this marriage, you don't even love this person. As we lay, we forgot about tomorrow. As we lay. <laughs> I mean, how many of these songs have they written about something like that? Got to get up in the morning and go, go back home to somebody you don't, you're not even in love with. That's tough. So I do these shows to put, open up my chest cavity and, and naked I come before y'all so that you can see that there's a, there's a dude here, six feet tall, dog, big nose, big smile, you know, don't get caught up with his bling and his suits and his ties and his rope and all that. Stuff. Don't get caught up in all of that stuff. He tells the truth and he's going to tell it even if it hurts him and expose his dirt, he's going to tell it. This is stuff that these cats like Lovey, they're not going to do. They're always going to tell you how wonderful life is. How wonderful life is <laughs> while you're in the world. Now, I'm going to tell you, it gets rough out here as a single man. Some of the finest women are at church. And my eyes still work. My eyes adore you, though I never laid a hand on you. My eyes adore you. (laughs) Come on, y'all. There's a million songs out there. Like a million miles away from you, you couldn't see that I adore you. (laughs) So close. So close, but yet so far. (laughs) My eyes, I ain't blind. Some of the finest women in the world is where I have to worship. (laughs) And I have to make sure I look, but don't touch. And then make sure if you look, don't look like Jesus said, you look with lust in you. (laughs) So I got to look up. Hey, sister, how are you? (laughs) Just fine. Ain't nothing about me broke. (laughs) Just my flesh still work. So be honest with yourself. But be careful because a man like Lovey would tell you, why struggle? Go ahead. Because it's not necessarily wrong. (laughs) Then he tried to cover himself. I say, but it can lead to. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, y'all. Uh, I have dinner upstairs cooking. Meet me Tuesday. If you are a private member of the Bunker family, we will interrogate the text. All right. Meet me. Uh, we didn't send Lovey. I didn't send him. Did you send him? I didn't. And for those of you who will dis be who hate this this show today, I'm not surprised. And you're going to continue to watch him. Don't bother me. I got it all out. You're going to do whatever you want to do when the show is over. You're going to go back to your own vomit. <laughs> uh, you know, I've, how many times have I returned back to my vomit? I lost count. I lost count. So the struggle is real, you all. For all of you who have struggles, I too struggle. And I don't tell y'all everything. I never tell you everything. I'm going to go into my grave with some of the stuff. I ain't telling y'all everything. But I will tell you, I'm flesh just like y'all. Here I am right here. Flesh. <laughs> he said you should play this money. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let me see. All right, hold on. <laughs> he wants me. Oh, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's so short man it's so short uh ronda um no nah, it would take me too long to do to talk about divorce i've done shows on divorce and i'm not i'm still not settled with my shows because i've done maybe three shows on divorce king james used the word fornication and another word another bible used the word adultery and folk got mad at me for my last show I did on marriage and divorce. <laughs> and it's, it's a difficult subject matter. It's one of the most hot bed, beds subject matters in Christendom today. Some of you are not allowed to get married because your wife or husband is still alive. And the scriptures are very plain on that. You can't get married except for adultery or fornication. That's the fight that I had with some people when I, when I came to adultery and, and fornication where Jesus was plain about that. All right, but then here comes the whole point about proving. Can you prove that my husband, my wife committed this crime, this sin, so that I can divorce him? And then, but that Jesus said, Can you remarry? <laughs> well, here goes the ambiguity here, okay? And then the word committeth, which is used in King James, all right? E T H, all right, is a continuous, or is it a word that is done one time, all right? This was the fight that we were having, so it's difficult to do shows on marriage and divorce. Well, it's not a not difficult to do a show on marriage and divorce. The problem is remarriage. And if you're going to talk about divorce, you got to bring up remarriage. Some people got remarried. Legally, they could remarry. Many people were not allowed to get married. Will they be in sin? Are they in sin? Seem like that's what Jesus is saying. But here's the thing. Do they put away their wives or their husbands? if they are in sin or can they repent before God? Now they come to the knowledge of the truth and then God will receive that. That's the fight right there. Paul brings up the same thing in first Corinthians chapter seven. It's a tough one and never be up under a teacher where he or she knows it all says he know or she knows it all. Cause I don't know it all. There are going to be some things that I've taught the bunkers that I I'm going to find out when I get to judgment uh, you taught them that wrong. <clears throat> I know that for a fact. That was incorrect. All right? So be honest with yourself and, and make sure your teachers be honest with themselves too. To thine own self be true. That's not in the scripture, but it sure feel like a wonderful proverbial statement. To thine own self. You need to be true. Hey, you all, listen. Uh, tomorrow is Amber Rogers' birthday. And let me tell you all something. I never asked y'all to do anything for anybody that I didn't care for who, who have not had an issue and needed some, some help or who just was a blessing to the community and just needed. And I wanted y'all to be a blessing. So for the first time in the so Walter Jones history, I want you all to do me a favor and go to this cash app right here. Bree Bree 45 and be a blessing to that girl right there. B R I E B R I E 45. You know why? Because 
many of your churches, pastors have someone, whether it's a male or female, who seems like they're doing everything. And y'all say, you're showing favoritism. Not necessarily. It's just that that person knows the ins and outs of the corporation, of the ministry. They've been with the pastor for many years, and they know how the pastor think. And they can finish their synthesis and what have you. That's Bree Bree 45. She's been with the So Other Journal Show for many years. And those comments y'all see coming in on both the face, both Facebook pages and on YouTube a lot of times, that's Amber Rogers. All of that Zoom work that y'all see and sending out those emails and putting together those flyers, that's Amber Rogers. Moderating, she was moderating uh, the um, Zoom sessions before the other moderators came on, that's Amber Rogers. And when I needed someone to help me write this last book here, that was Amber Rogers. All right. So if you're going to bless anybody tonight, uh, don't go to my cash app, go to hers. And I'm going to, I'm going to be one of the first ones to do something for her. She deserves it. And all of you bunkers have been blessed by her. She, y'all have, uh, many of you have struggled and you, um, especially the women, um, who were needing some assistance, needing some help, needing some encouragement, I sent y'all over there. And she blessed you. Did she not? Sure did. Mm-hmm. She did. I, I would often hear, thank you for sending me to, to Mrs. Rogers, Sister Rogers, whatever y'all call her. She was originally called the clock keeper. I remember the clock keeper. I would always say the clock keeper, clock keeper. That was years ago. I still call her the clock keeper. She put them clocks up and say, it's time to shut it down. So send a blessing. She is taking care of grown children. Her grown children came home and brought the grandkids home. She was living alone in Georgia, enjoying life, (laughs) retired, uh, uh, an award-winning author was on the Oprah Winfrey show, the Sally Raphael show, a very famous woman. And she just shut it all down and decided to just live peacefully at home. And then so while the Jones show came on the air and then she was like, ah, I got to work for this guy. <laughs> yeah. So her daughter came home, brought the grandkids home, and now she's got a house full of people that she's got to take care of. And that's expensive work, you all. Lights went up, I'm sure. Gas and electric went up. Food bill went up. Everything went up. Be a blessing to her. We please tonight. All right? I appreciate it. When you do that, um, you, I believe the Lord's going to pour back into your lives because you was a blessing to her. All right? Her birthday's tomorrow. So tomorrow, am I going live tomorrow? Um, I don't even know. I may not go live tomorrow. I think I got Bible study tomorrow. All right? So... Tomorrow is her birthday. Wish her happy birthday today and tomorrow for those of you who are watching the show. Uh, and May 30, today is May 30, tomorrow May 31st, that's her birthday. And for those of you put in the calendar, you know, I like to put the bunkers birthdays in the calendars every year. So it pops up every year on my phone. So put Amber Rogers' birthday, May 31st, in your yearly calendar on your iPhones and Android so it'll pop up. And then you get a reminder that says it's a birthday, and then you can do it again, just in case I forget. <laughs> all right, y'all. I got to go. I appreciate all of you for being a blessing to, to the Sir Walter Jones Show. And everything that we do and everything we've said, I know I've been quite controversial, and I'm glad I have, but I'm not as controversial as Corey Minor. <laughs> I'm not as controversial as he. All right, I got to get up out of here. I'll see y'all this Thursday, I believe, okay? God, we thank you for your presence and your blessings and all that you've done in our lives. The people are here. I tell you, I I tend to get myself into some stuff, but I brought Bible tonight. They can deny the word all they want to, but they can't unhear what they heard tonight. So, God, I tell you, I ask you, that is, will you please come into the room with the people who are being deceived by loving Elias and walk with him, talk with him, show him the way, bring him back, oh God, to the place where he first received you. Help him to do his first, his first works all over again. Return back to his first love and stay out of that mysticism talks. Help him, oh God, teach him, show him. That is, he's, he's veered off the pathway. That little, that narrow road, he's veered off. Push him back on there, God, I, I, there's hope for him. 
I'm not throwing him in the garbage, God. I believe as long as he got breath in his, in his body, he could lead people back onto the right path. I believe he can if you just walk with him. But right now, God is walking in the air. So help him as you help me. And thank you, God, for my brother Corey Miner. Thank you for the work that he's been doing over there on, on Smart Christian Channel. Be a blessing to him in his home, his wife, his children, his grandchildren, even his dog. Bless this man's house. We go out and come in. Continue to pour into his life. God, that you might strengthen him, that he can continue to stay on the wall. We love you, God. Thank you for Amber Rogers. Thank you for all the years you've given her through all of the medical issues that she might have had. And for the relationship, toxic and good, here she is being a blessing to nations. So Walter Jones' show airs throughout many nations around the world. And that woman right there is a big responsibility, have a big responsibility to keep us on the air. <laughs> looking at least good, looking good on the air. So thank you for her and all the bunkers here and all the moderators who make the show what it is. We love you. We give your name to praise in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Got to go, y'all. Dr. Kayla Harris uh, was in town a few hours ago. She's flown back to California, wherever she's going. All right, Dr. Kayla Harris, y'all see her in the comment section sometimes. She was here. I was with her last night. We had dinner and celebrated her life and education and what have you. We'll talk more about that when I see y'all next Tuesday, bunkers in the private room. Meanwhile... She gonna say hi to y'all in a few minutes. Take care of yourselves. Ah! Gentlemen, boys and girls, here she is right here, the great doctor. You see in the comment section, she don't have a full name. It just say Dr. K. <laughs> the one I'm always teasing, who be teasing me too, but she act like I don't know she be teasing me in the comments. She's so smart. Her words, uh, anyway, let's turn the lights on. We, we don't like being in the dark. <laughs> I don't know her like that. Let the light let shine. The light, so let that be light. How you doing, Doc? Is that right? Talk to the people. Oh, no. Let the people say. Oh no. <laughs> say hello to the bunkers. Hello. <laughs> Why are you in Chicago? I'm here for work. Mm. I'm here for work. Oh. And just talking about business. I see. So you didn't come here to see me. I absolutely did not. You see how she said I that? I absolutely did not. And there was no pause in between. I absolutely did ah! not. I did not. Clear. It's great. It's great. It's so great. It's awesome. All right. Encourage the bunkers. Encourage yourself. Okay, where's that Donald Lawrence? Uh, Donald Lawrence, D. Lawrence, my dear friend. <laughs> I will see y'all uh, on a Sunday school, I think, or maybe <laughs> Theology Thursday. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's this week. This week. Okay, there she is, y'all, in the flesh, in the skin. Okay, she on her way back to the thingy thingy tomorrow. Back to California. I just wanted her to say hi to y'all. Let y'all see. It's a real person. It's not a hacker on YouTube. I'm real. All right. Uh, you're supposed to say um, uh, hello or goodbye from the So Walter Jones Show. Say something. Goodbye. Like. Goodbye. <laughs> say, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs>
The Four Women That Men Desire by Sir Walter Jones is a women's guide to men. The authors endeavor to expose men fundamentally with his perspective on the types of women that men truly desire. He has meticulously penned a brilliant and controversial read, bold in its assertion that all women fall into one of four categories. Girl A, the side chick. Girl B, the mistress. Girl C, his soulmate. Or Girl D, his fatal attraction. And when a woman walks into a room, her category is showing. The Four Women That Men Desire is funny, informative, and enlightening. It is a quick read and a must-have for your library. Head over to Amazon.com for your copy. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Sir Walter Jones Show. <laughs> Goodbye.